much in the way of sports activity in old Flushing Meadows Corona Park and other sports across the street. Stay on this side of the street. It's a beautiful day after the rain out last night as the Braves and Mets get set to play two at Shea. At Shea Stadium in New York, the New York Mets play the Atlanta Braves in a doubleheader, also available in high definition. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Shea Stadium. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you for a long day of baseball. Mets and Braves got it rained out last night. They'll play two here today. For the Braves, this is their third doubleheader in the last five days. That's a pretty taxing experience. Uh, that'll wear you out if you're playing both ends of those doubleheaders. I'm sure there wasn't a manager alive that would, unless you're in a stretch run, you would play all six of those ball games doubled up. For the Mets, a chance to continue to reduce their magic number and, and continue to push the Braves toward elimination. Atlanta now hanging on the brink. They're five and a half games out on the wild card as we uh, push toward the last three and a half weeks. Well, they are on the brink of not being in the playoffs in how many years? Over 12 years? And it's been such a great run for them. Uh, it looks a little bleak when you got to jump over four or five teams. It makes it awful tough. Now for the Mets, they've been struggling offensively lately. Just five hits and one run in their last two games. And today, they've got to take on the Braves ace John Smoltz. Well they've run into a rash of good pitchers here this three three day a three game stretch and there's certainly there's no break here in John Smoltz 12 wins on the year. We know he's a future Hall of Famer. He's around 12 13 shy of 200 wins over 100 saves. What a wonderful career he's had. Meanwhile Dave Williams who's been a very pleasant surprise will go for the Mets. They picked him up from for a song from the Reds back in May makes his fourth start today. Well he's been spectacular. He's filled in for Pedro. He's 2 and 0 oh, as you said. And he has just pitched well the last outing up in Colorado. He threw a fine ball game. He's done everything the Mets have asked for him. Dave Williams may not be a part of the Mets postseason roster, but he's getting opportunities to show that he belongs. Well, he's certainly gotten a look, and then something I think more than he expected. His season didn't start out good. He got sent down, but he got traded over to the Mets. Boy, an opportunity knocked for him, and he has pitched well and taken advantage of his opportunity. So it's the Mets and Braves in a double dip at Shea Stadium. Fans making their way into the ballpark. Big night in the majors last night. We'll take a look around as we come back to Shea in a moment. Well, the weather has cleared significantly since last night's rain out. Beautiful day in New York as the Mets and Braves get set to play two. And Dave Williams making his way in from the bullpen to start game one for the Mets. Took a look at the subway around the majors. Nice to see David Ortiz back playing for the Red Sox last night. The Angels went on a walk-off home run. And Bronson Arroyo shuts out the Giants, one of seven shutouts in Major League Baseball last night. First time since, what, June 4th, 1972. That many shutouts in a day. Uh, absolutely incredible. We bemoan the lack of pitching sometimes, but it arrived last night. We check out the wild card standings. The Padres held on to win last night, 5-4. to four. Mike Piazza helped out with his 20th home run, and that expands San Diego's lead to two games in the wild card. You see the Braves fully five and a half games back. San Diego not only two games up in the wild card, but also now a game behind the Dodgers in the National League West. And the Dodgers come here tomorrow night, and this is going to be a crucial four-game series for them. Well, the Dodgers have been a hot and cold team. Well, they ripped off seven in a row. Now they've lost three in a row, and they've done this. It kind of sputtered like this off and on for the last month. Now this lead is closed down. they got to come here and play a very good Met ball club. San Diego's opportunity is right there, and Philly, for that and matter. The Mets will not face Brad Penny in that four-game series. He's been the Dodgers' ace all year. They also won't face the rookie Chad Billingsley, who's had to be scratched because of a side muscle. So the Dodgers are not going to put their best pitching foot forward in that four-game series. Well, you know, the pitching is a big part of that Dodger ball club. A big part of any winning ball club is pitching. That's the most important thing, and you certainly don't want to lose your pitchers down a stretch run. Well, as the Mets move toward clinching the National League East, they're going to certainly have an impact on all the other races as we head down the stretch of the season, playing the Braves here and then the Dodgers coming up here at Shea before they go to Florida next week for an important series for the Marlins. Mets and Braves, doubleheader. First pitch right around the corner. Well, Dave Williams was planning to pitch last night. And now less than 24 hours later, he'll take the mound against the Rico Braves lineup. Jeff Frank Kerr moved up to the third spot in the batting order. Braves without Chipper Jones for this series. Marcus Giles has not played in the series yet either, and so Bobby Cox has had to patch things together a little bit. 
and we're underway as Willie Ibar takes ball one from Dave Williams. And a line drive to left. And Tucker short hops the ball as he makes the slide. And Ibar has himself a leadoff base hit. And for Dave Williams, it's his 21st inning as a Met, the 11th inning that he's given up a leadoff hit. Well, that shows how he's pitched. He's pitched so well, he's pitched out of jams. He hasn't basically pitched well. He just got to get away from giving up that leadoff single or leadoff walk. And there you see his numbers. And those are composite season numbers. They're much different for the Mets. His ERA is 3.79 with the Mets. Edgar Renteria thinks about a bunt. The, the numbers are stark on Davies facing hitters leading off an inning as a Met as opposed to facing them with men on base. Notice I got that stark in there for you. I like that stark. 425 with the bases empty. 152 with runners on base. And that's a small sample obviously over three starts but he's basically spent his entire Met career now pitching out of the stretch. He's got a decent move to first base. Very good move actually. Doesn't give it away. Keeps runners tight. And it's 2-0 to Renteria. It's been a bounce back season for Renteria. After a tough year in Boston last year where he got booed regularly made 30 errors. He's not only fielded well he's hitting 300 and as usual a good clutch hitter. And he lines one to left another play for Tucker and this time he makes the sliding catch. Ball <laughs> stayed up just long enough for Tucker to slide in the very same spot and pick it off. Well Tucker is the exact same spot. <laughs> Tucker's saying hey it's a doubleheader it's a day game. Leave me alone hit it somewhere else. This is a nice play. He gets to this one. And how often do you see two identical balls hit back to back like this. That's shocking. I mean you ran those two plays back to back and they were the same. It's like that commercial where they uh, they changed the, the result of the cheater flip and the, the, the catch by Dwight Clark and they changed the result. Oh yes. It looked like that's what that looked like. The same play just with a different result. Nothing in one to Jeff Frank Kerr. Well the Geico met defense. You see Tucker of course with the start in left field. Chavez again in center. Beltron's going to start the second game. Sean Green in right. The newly acquired Sean Green. The same cast of characters in that infield. And Frank Kerr who actually drew a walk in the opening game of this series. A rarity for him. Falls behind in the count 0 and 2. Well talk about a beautiful day huh. Certainly has cleared out nicely. Some high clouds around but. Otherwise couldn't be more of a contrast with last night. Just perfect for the organ music. On a day game. Nice and relaxing. Organ music like the good old days. The organist was out before the game as Dave Williams throws a fastball by Frank Kerr and that's the second out. This opened the game right here. Tucker coming in, short hopping the ball, the line drive off the bat of Willie Ibar. And this is the second one. <laughs> no. That, you're right. It's not that commercial. That's how you get your uniform dirty in a hurry. <laughs> Andrew Jones takes inside. Well, and he had the grass stains from the first one, and then he got the grass stains on the other pocket. No computer gener regeneration there. And Andrew fouls oh. it back with the home run cut, one and one. Interesting about Andrew Jones this year: 32 home runs, 107 RBI. Look at his cut and his high fastball. That is vicious. Hitting a mere 219 with six home runs against lefties this year, which is a bit of a surprise. And the breaking ball misses, two and one. And what does that mean? Does that mean lefties are? Pounding him inside more. Does it mean that? He's well, lefties are more dip de dooters, change up here, fastball in. He's a power hitter. It just may be an off year for him. Because in the past, look up his uh, career stats yeah, against lefties. I was going to do that. In the past, the impression I have is that he's been great against lefties. Let's yes. see. 
Uh, lifetime batting average 276. Yes. 12 points higher than against righty. So he's having just an off year against left hand pitching. And I think Chipper Jones may have a lot to do with that. And the curveball misses three and two. Uh, Chipper usually hitting behind him and uh, giving him that protection. And maybe left handers pitching around him. That's all. Maybe he's a little swinging at bad pitches. He does strike out a lot. There's Chipper. He may miss the rest of the rest of the season with that. Uh, was it oblique? Yep. Second time he's hurt that. Remember he originally hurt it against the Mets in late July. On three and two, Andrew fouls it back. Oh, and then Chipper hurt it again over the weekend. And there's that same fastball. That another vicious cut. Got beat a little bit there. Dave Williams has got to make sure if he throws that fastball upstairs, he's got to get it there, right there. That's out of the strike zone. Don't get it in the letters. Look at this cut. Oh, wow, that one hit him. And so, instead of ball four, it goes in the books as a hit batsman, and the Braves have two men on. Well, it's a curve ball, the slow curve, and <laughs> there's no dodging that one. Tried to dance. Oh, didn't hurt. That is a nice do si do, isn't it? Well, you know, Andrew speaks four languages, and he can throw in a little Fred Astaire. It's Fred Asparagus. Excuse me? <laughs> Diaz lines went to left, and Tucker doesn't even have to leave his feet. <laughs> can you believe it? A standing out. So Dave Williams negotiates the first inning, an active one for Michael Tucker. Go take a rest, Michael. Long day of baseball to come. That's come to bat at the bottom of the first inning against John Smoltz. And interesting to see Sandy Alomar talking with Dave Williams in the dugout. It looks like he's talking about his stretch when he was holding runners up. Yep, that's what he's talking about. That maybe Sandy saw something. Chevy offers Mets lineup. Carlos Beltran sitting out the first game, but might be in the lineup as soon as the second game today. You'll have to see how he feels after he stretches a little bit. Jose Reyes leads off against Smoltz and takes a strike. Well, we don't even have to talk about this year. Look at, I mean, first, he and Dennis Eckersley are the only guys to have over 150 wins and 150 saves. One and He's, one to Reyes. Look at his postseason numbers 15 and 4 in postseason. That is incredible. That's crunch time. He's just such a great pitcher great competitor and still going strong at 39 maybe not throwing quite as hard as he has the last couple of years when he was pitching out of the bullpen he could let it all hang out a little more well when he first came up Gary and I faced him for the first time he was the one of the pitcher that impressed me two and two to Reyes and he had he threw very hard still does he had a great breaking ball, but he didn't have the command of the breaking ball. And I remember one time he threw me one that just missed, and I don't know how I took it and walked me. And that got my attention. And Reyes fouls off the breaking ball, two and two. And I said, if he ever learns the command, get command of that breaking ball, this guy is going to be a, a, a big winner. And the rest is history. And he's had to reinvent himself. You know, he had such elbow problems that he had to adapt, in fact, at one time even started throwing a knuckleball to be able to compensate for his elbow pain as Reyes golfs one foul. Well with the one advance the, the one big advancement I think in the game has been on the medical side. I do think on the negative side as you look there Cy Young look at all those MVP and N NLCS seven times. I mean, it's just a great career. I don't have to read that you all can see that great accomplishments by this athlete I do think that as far as the advancements of the medical I think they do create a little bit of hypochondria they do baby the players today a little bit too much but pitchers arms have been saved with the advancement in surgeries without question as Reyes lines one to center over the glove of Renteria and the Mets have a leadoff base runner 167th hit of the year for Reyes well, you know, the great pitchers, Steve Carlton comes to mind. You know, Greg Maddox, they're effortless. Look at this. No wasted, really, like Glavin, the same thing. Very straight up. 
in his delivery. Good sinker right there. Nice hitting by Reyes. So Reyes aboard, 56 steals on the year to lead the majors. Paul Aduka, seventh in the league in batting with that 314 average. He had a 12 game hitting streak stopped on Monday night. In fact, the Mets had four hitting streaks of seven or more games and all on the same night when they managed just one hit against Chuck James. Nothing in one to Laduca. Boy, Laduca hurt his thumb right there again. Every time he swings and misses. <laughs> and he takes a big cut here. This is a healthy cut. Well, it's something he's had to live with all season, just about. Talking to Willie Randolph before the game tonight, Willie said he plans to give Laduca a little more rest during September. And he's been sitting out mostly day games after night games. He said he might make it more like every third or fourth game during the stretch run to get him you know, maybe to be a little fresher come October but the thing about Laduca is over the course of his career he slowed down in the second half but not this year I think that Willie Randolph I think with Ramon Castro backing up the, ma the majority of the season I think Willie has been very judicious in using Loduca, and I think they were aware of it I mean they knew what they were getting in him and he is invaluable to this ball club in my opinion now, he's a calls a great game he's very much the leader on the infield um, and you want him strong for the season and then the only way to do that is to have a capable backup and Reyes stutter stepping as he took the lead draws the close play at first and the thing with the Duke is as we watch the pickoff try just back in time is that Luke has been playing with the thumb injury but he's been able to work through that. Last year, he played through a hamstring injury in Florida, and it affected him a lot more. As the ball goes to the backstop, and Reyes goes to second. Only the third wild pitch of the year for Smoltz. Well, it's a slider that got away from him, much like Dave Williams last inning when he hit Andrew Jones. This one just not even close. So Reyes now at second with nobody out. We'll see what Laduca does here. Two and one. He has dropped down a few bunts lately, particularly when that thumb's been barking, but not here. He tries to go the other way and fouls it off. Well, he got himself a hanger there, and you saw his expression. He had a pitch to hit, and he missed it. And off a good pitcher like Smoltz, it's not, you got to take advantage of the hangers, the mistakes. Reyes has scored 110 runs. That's third in the league right now. Behind Chase Utley and Carlos Beltran. Three and two to Laduca. This is kind of one of those games where it might take a couple innings to get that car kickstarted. <laughs> Everybody's a little bit. You know, even the fans here today, it's just a little bit of a sedate crowd right now. Little tapper. Reyes holding. Wow. And Smoltz makes the play to first. Seems as though Reyes could have walked to third base, but Smoltz throws out Laduca and Reyes doesn't move. Well, this is a mistake. I guess his only thought was maybe the catcher was going to get it, but he's got it. With his speed, he's got a break here. This is a good shot right here. Look how far down the line he is. Just misread it, I guess. Yeah, but it's a big boo-boo. Big boo -boo. So instead of a runner at third with one out, Reyes is still at second for Delgado. Carlos honored before the game as the Mets recipient of the Roberto Clemente Award. Each team has a player chosen for their community service and then one player selected at the end of the year as the Roberto Clemente Award winner for Major League Baseball. But Carlos honored before the game today for all the good work he's done with his Extra Bases Foundation. Helping out kids in so many ways. Renteria practically standing on second base, so Reyes can't get any kind of a lead. And Delgado gets tied up on the breaking ball, and he went around. Now, it just doesn't make sense to me that if you're going to play this big shift on the infield, you look at the breaking ball in the dirt, and right now Smoltz is having a hard time. 
finding that groove on his breaking ball. If you're going to play this big defensive shift, look at the outfield. It's straight away. It just doesn't make sense. Why isn't Andrew Jones over by the Nikon sign and then moving Matt Diaz over way over into the Chevy sign? Give him the left field line. All I can say is that we see a lot of teams do this, and it has to be that the charts tell them that while most of Delgado's ground balls go to the right side, that he's just as likely to hit it straight away or to left in the air. Well, with two strikes, he has the ability to go the other way. And in, in, in late RBI situations, now we have the benefit of seeing Carlos every day. The other team doesn't. Carlos is looking, always looking for a ball to, to pull early, and he doesn't, and you want him to. He, there, there are his outfield directions right there. It's 34 to left field. He's a situational hitter. Late in the game where a base hit beats you, then you want to play straight up because he will go the other way with, a, with just a single wins a game from the seventh inning on. Off speed misses away, and it's two and two. Well, the other thing about it is, you know, you watch the Braves all the time, and generally, under Leo Mazzoni anyway, they would have Andrew Jones playing a step or two to the opposite field against everybody and then have the corner outfielders playing the lines. So for Andrew even to be playing straight up, that's almost like he shifted to the pull side. Things may have changed a little bit this year. A little different emphasis in terms of the Braves pitchers working more inside than they did in the past. And that's under the influence of first year pitching coach Roger McDowell, former Met. Two and two to Delgado. It's been a hard working first inning already for Smoltz. And now it's three and two. And that ball bounces a little bit away from McCann. Not far enough away for Reyes to make a move. There's David. Bright eyed and bushy tailed. As my mother used to say. I wonder where that came from. What animal were they referring to? I got to believe it's a rabbit. Rabbit? I'm, I'm thinking raccoons. Oh, oh, they're night critters. Don't ask me why. They're night critters. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Delgado pulls it right at the second baseman, Prado. And that's the second out. So if you assume the same thing would have happened if Reyes had been at third, as he should have on the ground ball by Leduca, he'd be home now. And we're going to bring you the Ford Brave defense. And Willie Ibar now at third base. Chipper Jones, of course. Got the bad oblique muscle. He might sit out the rest of the season. Ibar gets the playing time. Diaz has been doing terrific in left field. Prado is a recent call up. He's at second base. Everybody else is pretty much the veteran lineup here. Well, here's David Wright trying to get the run in from third with two out. David's got a seven game hitting streak. He had the Mets only hit in the opening game of the series Monday night. And he pulls it right to Ibar, who makes a nice backhand stop. And that ends the inning. So Smoltz able to work around the leadoff hit and wild pitch. We go to the second inning in game one with no score. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by ChevyOffers.com, the presenting sponsor of Baseball Night in New York. Mike Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit Geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. By Rico, move your ideas forward with Rico dependability. By Honda, see your Honda dealer and discover the great values now being offered. And by Subway, introducing the play of the day at Subway, a regular six inch sandwich for only $2.99. Try all seven. Subway, eat fresh. Brian McCann launches one to deep right center field. Green going back, and it's out of here. Brian McCann with his 17th home run of the year on the first pitch of the second inning. And the Braves go in front one to nothing. Well, McCann has had a fabulous second year in the big leagues. Well, first time all-star. He is a good line drive hitter. Right now and early in his career, he's more of an opposite field hitter. But he's going to learn to pull. And right here, he's off sitting on a fastball first pitch and out over the plate and up. And boy, he stroked this one nicely. McCann had been struggling through a difficult road trip, just one for 15, but that ends in a hurry. And now Adam LaRoche hitting seventh in the order against the lefty, and he has been marvelous the second half of the season. Takes the breaking ball for a strike. LaRoche 40, 
three RBIs in 45 games since the All-Star break. Oh, you're always all smiles when you hit a bomb. Curveball for a strike one and two. Nice way to start your day. Start your doubleheader. See, if you're a catcher, though, you know you only have to play one game. More than likely. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time. And the curveball line into the glove of Reyes. Caught it with the snow cone, one away. Well, the, but hitting the ball hard off Williams early. Another curveball up. Reyes, nice play. Snow cone. Very nice. So one out and nobody on. Here's the rookie second baseman, Martin Prado, and he takes a fastball for a strike. Prado from Venezuela. Just 22 years old. He's had 23 at bats with the Braves. Marcus Giles is here and available for Atlanta and may well play the second game today. He's been on a whirlwind the last few days, Giles. Philadelphia over the weekend they suspected that he might have a malfunctioning heart valve they put him through 10 hours of tests sent him back to Atlanta to see a heart specialist and they said nope nothing wrong with your heart you have acid reflux and he flew back to New York in time to join the Braves on Monday there's a strike and Prado down looking second strike out for Williams two away so two out and nobody on well, here's Paul Duca before the game today. Well, no one hit today, so you want to come out. You've got to warm up. He's just throwing kind of. He's not loose yet. He's throwing that rainbow. You. He's probably that's probably early in his long toss. I don't know. You always want to to improve your arm, your kids. I know you're back in school, <laughs> but if you're playing hooky today, ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> But watching it on TiVo. If you want to improve your arm, you've got to stretch it out. And that's the purpose there of long toss. You get your build your arm strength up. As a kid, you want to throw, get loose, and then it's only as far as you can throw the ball distance wise on a line. Like an outfielder throwing home, hitting the cutoff now. And Williams strikes out Smoltz to end the inning. Third strikeout for Williams, but the Braves take the lead. On the Brian McCann leadoff home run, his 17th. And Smoltz has a 1 0 lead. Avoid traffic, take the train or water taxi to the game. Visit Mets.com for information on the fastest and easiest ways to shave. Mr. Met, all set for a long day of baseball, making friends out in the dream seats. Mr. Met ever get to sit down? He looks like Frankenstein's monster, isn't he, with all those scars <laughs> on his face? Those are seams. Oh. Come on, he's a baseball. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sean Green leads off the home second, and he pulls one foul. Scars. <laughs> it's an early day we, game, we, double we, dip. We, where did we see the fake Mr. Met? Was that, a, that was in Colorado. Oh, Colorado. The paper mache, paper mache. Mr. Met. A dry air up there. Anybody ever arrest that guy for impersonating a baseball? Toward the hole, and Renteria can't run it down. And Sean Green has himself a leadoff hit. Only his second hit in his last 22 at bats. Well, he's been struggling here in the Met uniform. Hit a good pitch right here. Renteria playing up the middle. And you can watch the great angle right here. Watch the reaction to Renteria. A little slow break there. I wouldn't have got it anyway too much in the hole but he certainly didn't get a good jump on that yeah, ball. when a shortstop doesn't react like that is that because he expects the pitch location to be different is that well um, they have a better angle to read than the corners I just think everybody's got a little bit of cobwebs in right now this day game today after everybody was here last night they have coming off now their third doubleheader as we said earlier and in five games so he just got a bad break at the day game a little harder to see the ball off the bat one and one to Valentin 
Valentin had a seven game hitting streak snapped on Monday night. And Valentin of course has just been. What an addition to this ball club he's been. And he's shown leadership too. He's he knows how to play this game. I've just been impressed with his. Drives it toward right center. Andrew Jones won't run this one down. Green to third. He's being waved home by Manny Acta. And Renteria will throw it into no man's land as Green scores on the double by Valentine to tie the game at one. Twenty second double for Valentine. Low and away fastball. Good spot. Hitting the gap. Watch the ball just kind of get stuck there. It just like a had a little backspin on it. And Andrew Jones must it. Sean Green would have scored anyway. Renteria just threw it to nobody. Well, he was going to throw to third. I think he came up throwing and tried to hold on to it. And he saw that Valentine stopped. But Valentine hustle was thinking triple all the way. Tucker swings at the splitter and misses. It's already been an active day for Michael Tucker in the field. Three balls hit his way in the first inning. And he hit the slide on two of them. Well, that had to feel good for Sean Green. It's been a real struggle for him the last week. Tucker, the former Brave, playing against his old team. I'm trying to think from Tucker's days with the Braves, basically talking about Smoltz and Chipper and Andrew. Left from when he was playing with Atlanta. The rest of the cast has changed. It happens. It happens everywhere. Old foul. I mean, how often these days do you get a guy like Smoltz who spends his entire big league career with one team. Yep. There. Well, he's not old enough to be in school. That's Lucky him. The only kid in the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> One and two now to Tucker. He should end up with a box of baseballs by the end of the day. Andy Chavez sitting eighth in the order on deck. Valentin at second. He drove in his 53rd run of the year with that double. And it's two and two to Tucker. Cliff Floyd was scratched from the lineup in the opening game of this series. And there's a possibility Cliff could play in the second game today, but that's by no means guaranteed. How about Ken Griffey Jr.? Dislocating his toe. Jeez. Tucker goes down on the breaking ball and Smoltz has his first strikeout. Well, it's an off speed curve here. Took a little something off. You got Tucker out in front. Stands on top of the plate. He's got full. Now, Smoltz knows how to get ahead of people. Only Mike Messina and John Lieber have thrown more first pitch strikes than Smoltz this year. And Smoltz now has 2,746 strikeouts, career strikeouts. And that one gets away, second wild pitch of the game, and that moves Valentin over to third. That's a big base. That's the go ahead run now at third base with one out. So Smoltz, who had only thrown two wild pitches all year, has thrown two in the first two innings. I think that's a splitter. You see that the can was set up way outside of the outside corner, and it was a way inside. Tough, tough chance. There's Bobby, Bobby Cox, of course. Pat Corrales, his bench coach in the foreground. This is the first batter that Smoltz has thrown a first pitch ball to. So that just exemplifies what we showed before about his first pitch strike percentage. Infield in now with one out. And Andy takes a strike. Now, we all know that Willie Randolph does not like the squeeze play. He doesn't use it. I don't think he's used it once since he became manager of the Mets nearly two years ago. But you got a great bunter at the plate in Chavez if you ever wanted to use it. Surprising they're in so early. One and two to Chavez. Very surprised that their infield's in, I guess. Well, Bobby managed last the other night, the full first game of the series. He bunted three times. He played very conservatively, played like he was managed, like he was. Managing for a playoff spot. 
is a little shorthanded offensively without Chipper and without Giles. And even though the Braves have been a good offensive team this year, as you look at Andy's numbers this year and last, they're not quite the same offensive team right now. Well, there's a big reason right there, that man being out of the lineup. And you got Giles out of the lineup. Two and two to Chavez. Laid off, not foul tipped it. a piece of it. And it stays two and two. Well, there's Dave Williams in the on deck circle. I always feel you've got to. Most of the time when you're ahead in the count, hitters are more vulnerable in, but you've got to pound Chavez in. Andy with two strikes goes the other way so well. Look how uh, on top of the plate he is, too. He's very close to the plate, and they're going to go inside. And miss three and two. Now, remember, Williams had a great offensive game his last start against Colorado, other than missing third base. That's for, you got such a good memory. But he was on base four times in that game. He went two for two, didn't he? And Chavez just gets a piece of the splitter to stay alive. Went two for two with two walks, scored a run. And had one taken off the board. Yes, because he missed the base, you're right. That was a one to five on your scorecard. Yes, it was. An appeal play. How do I know that? But I learned from you. It cost Reyes a double. I keep my scorecards now. You do? I can look back on the game. That was a little flare, and Renteria picks it off in the second half. It's one of the few things I've learned from you this year. <laughs> well, now you have an archive. Yes. Maybe you could, when you, the season's over, you can take the, the scorecards and you put them on eBay, and you never know what somebody might pay for them. It's a very good idea. When I first saw you do that, I said, aha, that makes perfect sense. So, And, and you know, yours are so colorful that they're worth saving. They're worth framing. It's like uh, going to the Louvre. Dave Williams takes a strike. <laughs> you got your Da Vinci's here. You got your Hernandez's here. <laughs> it's a shortstop, and Renteria waits on it and throws out Williams, and John Smoltz able to minimize the damage in the second, but the Mets get even on Valentin's RBI double. Big day at the Big Shea. Tied at one. Oh, ho, ho. Hoffa. Well, you've heard us explain that this September the WB11 is changing into the new CW11, but here's something you may not know. Starting September 18th, Jim Belushi's bringing his Laugh Out Loud family comedy, According to Jim, to the new CW11. So look for According to Jim weekdays this fall on the CW11. Well, there they are working away at the new stadium right over the center field backdrop. Ground officially still not broken. The pile driving noise has subsided. Looks like bedrock. You mean like the Flintstones? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of, plenty of rubble out there, <laughs> Barney. Willie Ibar leads off the third for the Braves and takes a strike. Ibar led off the game with a base hit to left. Willie Ibar picked up from the Dodgers in July. And a base hit to center, and Ibar is two for two. And so for three straight innings in this game now, Dave Williams is allowed a leadoff hit, and that's 13 of the 23 innings that Dave Williams has pitched as a man. He's allowed a leadoff hit, but he doesn't allow anything else. It's bizarre. Well, it's not bizarre. He just gets three outs before they can score. What's bizarre about that? But all his hits come leading off innings. It's it's asking for trouble. Here's here's what I would recommend. I would recommend he pitch from the stretch to the first guy in the inning. That's a very good point. There are pitchers that do that. Lots of relievers. Right. Renteria lined out to left. A sliding catch by Michael Tucker in the first inning. But seriously, you think it's a difference in approach that he's attacking hitter the first hitter more, trying to get that first down and, and, and not walk people and. and and thus is giving up more hits to leadoff hitters? That I don't know, but it is a trend. It's, it's the amount of times it happens so far as a Met, it's, it's a pattern. Why? I'd have to go back and look at all the leadoff singles and see, and see what he's doing differently, how they're attacking him. 
how the hitters are attacking him. But I don't think uh, our producer and director, Bill Webb and Greg Picker, want to go back into the archives and bring that up. 23 innings <laughs> of leadoff hitters. It'd be a lot to look at all at once. It'd be like a football coach running those plays back and forth on the old projector. They're down there in that bat cave outside the ball club in that control center. And he's picked him off. I bar tagged out at second by Reyes one away. Now that'll take care of a lead off base hit. I bar taking off on what might have been a hit and run play which makes it even worse. Well he's got the good move. He said it in the first inning. Doesn't go. I bar taking a chance that he was just going when he breaks from the belt. He's dead. He is a dead doornail. He, he had no jump there. That looked like a hit and run play didn't it. Three and one to well, Renteria. If it's a hit and run play, he's then it's his mistake. You don't get picked off on a hit and run. You're not trying to steal a base. And I guess I wasn't really paying attention. That's okay. You'll you'll see the next one. It's a day game. We're only in the third inning. I got another whole game to go after this. I have a very scrutinizing <laughs> eye. <laughs> the well. central scrutinizer. You see all. You remember that album, don't you? No, I don't. Frank Zappa. You're, you're, you were a much bigger Zappa fan than I was. Chavez going back. Has room. And Renteria retired two out. You, you told us the other day that at one time in your life you looked like Frank Zappa. Well, that one baseball car when I had the long hair and the mustache, I certainly looked like Frank Zappa. <laughs> I never liked that card. Oh, it was my one card I hated. I looked like a, I was a mullion in that card. <laughs> Here's Jeff Frank Kerr, and he takes a breaking ball for a strike. How do you rule that when, when you, the pickoff, is it one? Clock stealing, one, it, three, six. One, three, six. Okay, that's what I thought. One and one to Frank Kerr. Anytime a runner breaks for second, whether he tries to get back or not, then it goes as a caught stealing rather than a straight pickoff. Two and one to Frank Kerr. Well, there he goes. See, this is how he gets out of his his jams. He's that, really got a works. good move. It's a nice weapon for him to have that nice move to first base. Goes upstairs with the changeup, and it's two and two to Frank Kerr. Well, he's going up out of the zone on Frank Kerr. He's doing that well today. He did it to Andrew Jones, and Andrew Jones is first at bat. Well, one thing about Frank Cor, he doesn't get cheated. And that's why he's got 93 strikeouts. I'm sorry, 109 strikeouts on the year. 110 now. 110 strikeouts and 16 walks. He does not get cheated up there. And really, you look at his numbers. It's a 24 home runs and 93 RBIs. And he got off to that horrific start, Gary. And only one player in baseball has more two out RBIs this year than Frank Kerr. And that, that's something that really helps your team. Pops this one up foul. Ryan Howard has 51 two out RBIs and Frank Kerr has 48. Second in the majors. And speaking of Ryan Howard and I've said he'd finished third in the we got a whole month left. But he is having a terrific September so far. Popped up and Delgado with room. That ends the inning. So Williams gives up another leadoff hit and posts another zero on the scoreboard. One one game. As we go to the bottom of the third. <laughs> Mets and Braves tied at one as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Along with Keith and Gary, I'm Chris Cotter at Chase Stadium. And I'm joined by Cass Sapir, who uh, at 27 years of age is taking a tour around the country. And yesterday we talked a lot about what some of these Mets are doing charity-wise. And Cass, you, you're doing something for the Jimmy Fund, which is a Boston-based cancer research fund. And you have decided to travel to each and every professional ballpark in America, haven't you? That's right. It's 189 in all, 50,000 miles, 46 states. It's every major and minor league baseball stadium. And you're doing this in one year? We're trying. It's 175 days, one summer. And That's you've right. gone through every one but three parks after Shea. Is that correct? That's right. We have a doubleheader today, Shea, the Brooklyn Cyclones, Hudson Valley Renegades tomorrow, and then Friday we finish off in style at Fenway Park. 
Well, as Jose Reyes steps into the box here, how are you raising money through this trip? Uh, you know, most of the places we just called up the minor league teams um, and we'd say, this is what we're doing. Can we do a raffle maybe? And in most of the parks, we've been doing a raffle to raise money for the Jimmy Fund. What's uh, the most interesting park you've been to? Uh, I like when Montgomery, Alabama, it's called the Montgomery Biscuits Stadium, <laughs> where they serve fresh biscuits with butter and gravy. Oh, that's, that's, see, that's, that's down south, guys. That's what I like, little fresh biscuits. Uh, give, give the folks uh, like an email address where they can maybe contact you, check out a little bit more about what you're doing. Uh, absolutely. Our website is tourforthecure.org. Photos, stories, video from the tour. And of course, if you'd like, you can donate to the Jimmy Fund on the website. Well, guys, you know, 189 parks. I thought we had it rough in terms of our travels. These guys are going to sometimes two, even three parks a day. You know, this is a very long day. When he started talking about Mon the Montgomery Biscuits, all of a sudden my stomach started to growl. But that's that's a great cause and having a lot of fun at the same time, I'm sure, touring all these ballparks. When I first started playing minor league ball back my first year in 72, I played in the Florida State League. And then in Texas, Texas League, which was the South, And got my got my first introduction to grits, which I did not like. No, no, but I'd love biscuits and gravy. A little butter and salt on those grits; they taste pretty good. You couldn't get me to have grits <laughs> if you put a gun at my head. <laughs> two and two to Reyes, leading off the home third, and he hits the curveball, base hit. Let's see if he can leg this into two. Frank Kerr's got a good arm, and Reyes is not going to challenge him. And so the Mets have a leadoff hit for the third straight inning. Well, a very good bat here for Jose. Deep in the count, hanging curveball, got his finally got his pitch to hit, and that's a pitch before that we'd see him jumping at and not being patient and waiting for it. And there's the great speed, always looking for the extra base. They can double out of the box, no question. He's a hustler. Now, after he made his base running mistake. In the uh, first inning, didn't go second to third on a comebacker. Manny Acta had a very long conversation with him. Be interesting to see how he approaches this trip around the bases. Nope, well, oh my goodness! That's Mom. a that's a cotton candy face right there. You know what that means too? Mom is not in the ballpark. His dad. It's got to be just the dad. Now wait a second. Mom would not let him. Now he's be old enough. like that. He's old enough to be in school. <laughs> Ball one to Laduca. I guess there are some school systems that have not yet started. There you see what the way Manny approached Reyes. Constantly teaching the coaching staff here, and that was back in the first inning. Renteria to Prado and on to first double play, two out. 6-4-3 on the double play, two out and nobody on. Well, Taylor made right here. See how Renteria gets in front, very nice. Nice pivot over there by Prado. Taylor made, especially with Laduca running. You know you don't have to rush. It's important to you infielders out there to know the base runner, know the base runner, and know the hitter, their speed. The ball's hit to me. What do I do with it? Who's running? Do I have to rush? No, I don't. And you see the full infield shift on against Delgado with nobody on this time. And he takes a strike. Delgado grounds it out to the second baseman his first time up. Look at the third baseman. Look how far over Ibar is. And the outfield again. Look at Andrew Jones in the, in the background there. Straight up. And Francoeur straight up. Almost playing for pull. Francoeur is playing for pull. So there's big gaps here available for, for Delgado. Think about the corner outfielders for the Braves as they always play close to the lines because Andrew covers so much ground in center. One and two to Delgado. That was a great shot of that right side of the infield from that high right field or first base camera. And just look, just look, look at the infield how beautiful it's so well manicured here that's why I see so much in the ballpark so there's not a bad hop on that infield watch we'll see a bad hop <laughs> but this was always an infield I loved I had tremendous confidence in this infield never worried about a bad hop and that has a lot to do with the ground crew they do a great job here there's a good infield <laughs> that looks like Atlanta's old 
ballpark. And the curveball in there for a call strike three and Delgado not happy at all with Ted Barrett at that call. Brown screw comes out to do their work. Smoltz has his second strikeout. That infield will be raked even more. Mom must have called. They they wiped the cotton candy off. Or oh, dad got chewed out of it. <laughs> Time for the MLB.com SNY text message poll of the day. Today's question, which Met is most deserving of having his number retired? Text message your answer to 57508 for each text. You'll be entered into a drawing to win two tickets to the first NLDS game at Shea. Standard rate messaging fees may apply. Check with your carrier. Go to SNY.TV for full details. As Andrew Jones takes a strike. And joining us in the booth here in the top of the fourth is Mets general manager Omar Minaya. How are you, Omar? All right. How are you doing? <laughs> well, as, all, as Andrew Jones lifts one to right center. Let's try to get not. Every time I come up here, the opposing team sends to score some runs. You I don't think it's going to happen this time. You should come up when the Mets are batting <laughs> I was. Time. I thought about that. You know what I'm saying? I thought about last inning. I, well, I should come up here when we're hitting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Actually, I should do is stay around even when we're hitting. If we can do that. <laughs> Tell me what it's like for you this time of year because it's almost as though this this team's in a holding pattern until October you haven't clinched the division yet but it's an inevitability over the next couple of weeks so what are you feeling what are you thinking right about this time of year well you still have to continue to focus on the day you got to focus to make sure that you're playing each game you know each day the team is prepared and I say of course that's not nothing of my doing but me with me and Willie continue to communicate on that look at every game that goes on and how do we prepare for the game today that being said, because of the lead, we also have to focus on the future. And the fact is right now that, you know, up, up until August 31st, you are able to bring in some players that we're going to hopefully, if you get into the playoff, which we hope we will, be able to play beyond uh, the regular season. So, but right now what we're talking about mostly is focus on today. As I was talking to Keith, you know, these kind of games, you know, you play day games right now, and uh, it, the focus has to be on the day, today's game. You, ha you try to think about you know beyond the regular season uh, I'm one of those that I want to kind of keep focus on what we have in front of us right now at the same time it's fair to you should think beyond the regular season but it's, when it's all gets to that as you're talking about hopefully some advanced scouting which every club is doing whether they're going to get in or not um, and just talk through some issues from the front office side you start talking about next year from scouting and development standpoint start talking about you know what you're going to do this winter as far as how are you going to prepare the team uh, for the coming year? Now, four, six, three double play ends the inning. You'll hang on with us. I'm we? hanging on. Oh, you got it. We'll, yep. we'll get Omar in here while the Mets are hitting. See if he can have some little, runs. little That's magic right. there. We go to the bottom of the fourth, tied at one. Bottom of the fourth inning. John Smoltz will take on David Wright to lead off the bottom of the fourth. There's a hard hat. It's a great look. That's a 70s look. And so is that. Oh my goodness. Napoleon Dynamite grows up. We shall. I used to look like that. <laughs> Senior pitchers. <laughs> David Wright will lead off the home fourth inning. We're being visited by Omar Minaya, the Mets general manager. Omar, you've got um, eight call ups with a possible ninth on the way. How do you guys decide, you know, what kind of level of call ups you want to have in a given September? Well, always uh, as a general manager, you, come, you, know, you you speak with your manager and you speak with your coaches. I'm not of the belief of having too many guys up here, you know, just for the sake of getting a call up. I mean, it's got to be guys that either have contributed during the year or you feel will contribute sometime during September, and there has to be some development value. Um, you know, in our situation, most of the guys that we brought up, whether it's a millage, and we're basically evaluating some of these guys, hopefully for beyond beyond the regular season. Uh, one guy we did bring up was a guy like a, a Phil Umber, and his, that was more for me, a guy who worked his, you know, worked hard to get himself to pitching. I got to see him last week at Double A. He is going to be part of our future, and hopefully he's going to experience a September, um, you know, of how, how how a team, a winning team, gets itself uh, prepared, and hopefully to play beyond September. It's like getting invited to spring training on a big league roster or you're an invitee. It's 
you, you want to give those young players a taste. This is the big leagues, and this is something to strive for. You know, this is it. It's a show. Yeah, exactly. Keith. You know, and I'm not of the belief of bringing too many guys in because when you get too many guys up at the major league not lock, I'm very protective of the clubhouse, and I think the clubhouse is really something sacred for the players. And you know, you got to earn. For you to be in that clubhouse, you got to earn your way there. It shouldn't be given to you. Uh, so it, it's kind of you know we look at it. We try to be limited. At the same time, we also have to keep development in mind. Now, I know we're three and a half weeks away, but everybody wants to talk about postseason rosters. Now, you've got, you're still waiting on Pedro to return, and obviously your hope is that he'll be fully healthy and ready to go by the time October arrives. But have you given thought to 10, 11, 12 pitchers, what John Main's role might be in the postseason, things like that? Yeah, we have talked about that. You know, we kind of go over that. You know, it's still kind of early because we're still early in September, but it's fair to say that we have discussed those things, and we'll probably discuss it more uh, more in, in depth uh, as we get to the second half of September. Does September performance matter in those questions, do you think? I think so, yeah. I think the hot hand matters in those questions, of course. You know, I think that, you know, like anything else, once you get to, you know, it's really about, you know, who's, who's the hot hand. Now, that being said, you know history bulk of history as far as performance and they're just because a guy a veteran guy goes into a slump does not mean you're going to discount uh, what he's done over his, his career and Sean Green takes a call third strike and that's two out now if you um, if you go with 11 pitchers you're going to have to make a decision and right now of course you've got Hernandez and Moda basically doing the same role right now I mean, Maine's pitched so wonderfully, and you're not going to go with what? You're not going to go five starters, obviously, in the playoffs. I mean, you, right. might, you might even go three, depending on how it goes. But um, I know you said well, we're going to end the inning again. You want to hang around again? Are you, I'll hang around. Are you fine. bored? You're no, no, anything, no. I'll be you? fine. No, let's, hang we're around. Gonna, we're going to be here for two, so that's fine. <laughs> you, you weren't good for a run in this inning. I just want to point oh, that out. Oh, God. <laughs> have to stick around see if you can put up a zero in the top of the fifth. Well, there were that's seven fine. shutouts yesterday. <laughs> that's anyway. exactly right. We go to the fifth inning. Mets and Braves tied at one. Adam LaRoche will lead off against Dave Williams, and Omar Minaya has been kind enough to hang around with us. Uh, have a couple of very quick half innings, so we're going to talk fast now. Uh, <laughs> we just want to follow up on what we were talking about when we went to break about the pitching and about John Main and about the fact your bullpen's been so good it would be hard to, to ace anybody out of a jab, job in the postseason. Yeah, you know, when it gets to putting a roster together for a playoff, you have to make some tough decisions. And, uh, you know, you you know, you really, you know, you have to look at it, and as you said before, who's hot, who has a history, uh, who are you playing in the playoff? I mean, that comes into play, too. You're playing a team that's dominant uh, left-handed hitting, a team that's dominant right-handed hitting. All those things come into play, and when it's all said and done, you're going to make one or two decisions that are not going to make people happy. But you got to make them because it's about the team. It cannot be about your heart. It cannot be about the individual. It has to be about what gives us the best opportunity to win. Now you talk about who you play, and obviously you know there are you know, ten teams out there who you might end up playing in the postseason. And you know we go to Houston, and and everybody's thought is nobody wants to play the Astros because they have those three good pitchers at the head of their rotation. But do you guys see things in those terms? Do you, do you want to play a certain team? Do you? Do you, do you have scouts watching all these teams? How, how does that all work for no, you I, I don't, in your I mindset? Don't, you can't think about that. You got you can't think about other teams' strength. You got to think about your strength. Get yourself ready to play our game. If we can be healthy and play our game, it doesn't matter who we're playing. That's the way we have to think about it. We can be in saying, well, we wish we, we'd rather play this team than that team. To me, you t you got, when you start putting the focus on another team and start fearing other teams, you, 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 you got to think about yourself. You got to think about this is what we can do. If we, if we stick to what we can do strong, we'll be okay. And that's the way, that's the way Ali, we think we should prepare. I agree. You go with your strengths. And it's, it's not looking for, for matchups. You're going with your best players. Smoltz gets the bunt down, and that'll move Prado over to second with two out. Tell us about Pedro. How, was, how did his work session go out there? His work session went well yesterday. He, you know, he threw the ball well. He had a nice... Uh, you know he's very uh, upbeat about it. Rick uh, Peterson and Willie were upbeat about it, and hopefully we can get him here on the mound. And our goal is to be able to get him, hopefully for about you know, three good starts, 
Uh, hopefully, you know, so we can when we get to October, he's ready to go. Well, he went through seven innings in spring training and looked like that was enough for him. So he doesn't need much to get ready. Well, you know, I, I agree. <laughs> I don't. You know, the thing for me, the key is going to be that he's, you know, ready to pitch and. and and the fact is that if he's physically ready and we don't know the page that we've always had, we should be able to, uh, give, you know, Pedro's going to give us a good game. All right. Well, Omar, thanks very much for spending all this time with us. And uh, good luck through September as we look forward to October. Well, let's, let's go win some more games. Let's close this out first. And then the next time I'm around, we'll talk more about the postseason. All right, Omar Minaya. As we go to the bottom of the fifth, Mets and Braves locked in a 1-1 tie. Matt Yaloff here with a Chevrolet Baseball Day in New York update. Two playoff hopefuls, Reds and Giants. Ray Durham, San Francisco, two home runs so far in the day. Giants up 3-1 in this game, this game in the sixth inning. Back to Gary and Keith at Chevy. All right, Matt, thanks very much. The Reds and Giants, both three and a half games off the wild card pace. You know, the Reds led that thing for so long, but now they've kind of slipped back and you know, they get the Padres, the Phillies, and the Marlins all ahead of them now, and it might be awfully tough for the Reds to find that second wind and bounce back. And they lost Ken Griffey Jr., dislocated toe. I mean, when he gets hurt, he gets serious injuries. Michael Tucker leads off the home fifth inning in a 1-1 game, and Tucker takes a strike. And meanwhile, the Giants, you know, Barry Bonds all of a sudden has gotten very hot. And he's capable of putting up numbers over three weeks that could put the Giants over the top. Well, the Giants have decent pitching. And they're up there in the sixth, as you see right there. The bottom of the sixth, three to one. Who's got the start in that game? Let me find that for her. That Hennessy today for the Giants? Uh, you are probably right. I'll look right now. Sanchez. Two and oh. Sonny Kim just acquired yesterday by the Reds making the start for them. They got him from Colorado. Carpenter goes for St. Louis today. Diaz in left makes the catch on Tucker and that's six in a row retired by John Smoltz. One down at the bottom of the fifth. As we check out the Hyundai in-game box score Jose Reyes two for two today. I'll say Valentin has driven in the only run with a second inning double as the Mets have managed four hits off John Smoltz after managing just a total of five hits in their previous two games. As Andy Chavez fouls one off and the, the one run and five hits the Mets tallied in the last game in Houston and the first game here against the Braves. It's the first time the Mets have had as little as one run and as few as five hits in back to back games since 19. 94 and the only time before that 1976 so the kind of offensive brownout the Mets have had the last two days is pretty rare 1976 was the beginning of those lean years where the Mets started going downhill in 76 you remember that huh? I do because we were playing in 76 with St. Louis and we were in last place a couple games behind the Mets in September yep and Augie Bush came in our clubhouse around 80 something years old and sat down and still with that gravelly voice and said guys the Mets in front of us <laughs> you gotta be kidding me and so we wound up finishing in fifth place ahead of the Mets you didn't get any money for fifth did you no. Chavez drives one to the gap in left center Diaz over to cut it off and he's going to try for two Diaz with the throw not in time it gets away but backed up by LaRoche and Chavez will hold it second. Well Diaz threw out David Wright trying to stretch a single into a double on Monday but not Chavez. Well good breaking ball hitting right there and Diaz not a great fielder out there by any stretch of the imagination. Not a strong arm. And Andy never hesitated. He's another hustler. A lot of hustlers on this team. And there you see him right there. He has double on his mind once he left the box. So let's see what Williams can do with a runner in scoring position. He grounded out his first time up. Dave looking for his first run batted end of the season. He's got a couple of home runs in his career.
Oh, that well, was not a good cut. That swing is not going to get you a home run. Carlos Beltran looking on. Willie Randolph said before the game there was a possibility that Beltran could play in the second game today if he felt well enough. Coming back from bruising his knee on Saturday night in Houston, making a brilliant play. That's an emergency cut to keep the at bat alive. Mets have not been particularly successful when Beltron does not start a game. Mets are nine and eight in games that he didn't start. Look how look the disparity in batting average and runs scored when Beltron doesn't play. Pretty stark. Stark indeed. I, how much do you make of that? Does does having one guy out of the lineup have that much of an impact on the guys around him? I don't know if it has impact around him other than the fact that you're losing an MVP bat here, a potential MVP bat. He's got over 100 RBIs, 100 runs scored. Everybody wants to focus on Carlos, his offensive numbers, his productive numbers, his RBIs, his batting average, home runs. As Williams goes down swinging, and that's the second out. But I think the one thing that you do, you take out a guy that has scored over 100 <laughs> runs, too, and he walks a lot. He gets on base. He has a high on-base percentage. It's the year you've been waiting for. Register for your opportunity to buy tickets to potential 2006 Mets postseason games at Shea. For more information, go to Mets.com or LosMets.com today. Two out, here's Reyes. Reyes with two outs and runners in scoring position this year is hitting 414. That's how he has 70 RBIs out of the leadoff spot. And folks 70 RBIs out of a leadoff hitter is phenomenal and he's going to obviously build on that but that the toughest RBI is the two out RBI that's he's clutch hitting he's two for two today yeah, Darren Nurse said once drove in 100 runs out of the leadoff spot but that was in the American League where you've got a hitter batting right in front of you in the National League where you have the pitcher batting right in front of you that would be just about impossible. And thus the disparity that the DH brings to the game. Ron Darling made the point that his strikeouts went down when he went to the American League. Something, something I never thought of. And it makes perfect sense. You haven't got a pitcher in there. So when it comes to statistics, it's not. It, are those taken into consideration in RBI numbers? I mean, if you're a third hitter and you drive in 90 runs in the National League with a pitcher up there, you're in the American League. You're going to have a good hitter in the ninth hole. How many times in the course of the season will that play out where as a third hitter you'll get up with men on base where with the pitcher he clogs things up and innings over with. Don't you remember that's why Tony La Russa batted his pitcher eighth when he had McGuire so McGuire would have the benefit of one extra hitter ahead of him. And Reyes strikes out to end the inning five strikeouts for Smoltz and he works around the one out double by Chavez. So the Mets unable to take advantage of the opportunity and we're still tied at one going to the sixth does it here maybe you will State Farm Mets weekly on Sportsnet New York your all access pass to the New York Mets as the Mets TV home brings them into your home in season off season every week of the year traffic on a Wednesday afternoon come on <laughs> Dave Williams back to work in the sixth inning. Williams, after giving up leadoff hits the first three innings, retired the leadoff batter each of the last two innings and then gave up a one out hit. See if he can hold the pattern here. Edgar Renteria 0 for 2. He's hit the ball well twice and he takes ball one. Renteria lined out to left, a sliding play by Tucker, and then he sent Chavez deep in center for a fly ball in the third. One and one. Well, Williams continues to throw well every start he gets keeps his ball club in the ball game and giving them innings he's kept his pitch count down he threw 19 innings in his first three starts and here now pitching in the sixth and he's only thrown 64 pitches Smoltz has been on a par with Williams today lifted to left and Michael Tucker is there one away. Well, he gives up a lot of hits. 
compared to innings he came into this game with 19 innings pitch 22 hits he's thrown five and a third now giving up five hits. So he gives up more hits than innings pitch which is not good but. And his walks so far this year are just been you know he's two walks in 19 innings as a Met so that's doesn't walk people that keeps you out of trouble. Nothing in one to Frank Kerr. Hey remember earlier in the season when Jose Lima, Lima made a start for the Mets. And Angel Hernandez was the home plate umpire and Angel allegedly told Lima that he didn't get a certain call because he's not John Smoltz. Yes well, I remember that today Dave Williams has been John Smoltz. Yes he has. And not Jose Lima. One and two to Frank Kerr. And that's a. Typical comment out of Angel Hernandez who I think is one of the. More temperamental arrogant umpires in the league that needs to kind of. Tone his act down a little bit. A little too much of the macho. For me. But those are the umpires you never. You never get in arguments with. There's always a handful of them. The majority of them are even tempered and. Once you find out who the hotheads are those are the ones they ring you up on a pitch you think the ball you just don't. You don't ever get in a fight with them because. They have long memories. Three and two to Frank Kerr. You look at the pitch count on Williams. Frank Kerr, who never walks, strikes out. Fourth strikeout for Williams, two down. Well, as I've said here, and he's gone up the ladder more than he's done in the past. He's gone that fastball just out of the strike zone. So two out and nobody on as we check out the Jeep upcoming schedule. Got another game to play today. Don't forget about that. And then four with the Dodgers over the weekend. The Dodgers just one game up on the Padres in the West. And then the Mets go to Florida and Pittsburgh. And uh, you know people are trying to figure out when the Mets might be able to clinch this National League East. And right now you'd have to focus on that next road trip. Nice easy hop for right. And he throws out Andrew Jones and Dave Williams. That's his first one two three inning of the afternoon. So Williams rolling. Smoltz has been just as good. We're tied at one. Game tied at one as we go to the bottom of the sixth and the opener of a doubleheader. Don't forget to vote on the MLB.com SNY text poll of the game. Which player is most deserving of having his number retired? 31, 17, 8, 36. I'll recuse myself from this quiz. Poll, excuse me. Recuse, that's good. That's, that's, that's a very judicious word. Nice job. Thank you. Paul Duca leads off. Clouds overtaking the sun. Getting a little darker here at Shane. No rain in the forecast though. And Smoltz throws a breaking ball. Smoltz has not been able to keep his pitch count down quite the way Williams has. That was his 83rd pitch of the game. Duca over two. Smoltz with no walks. Neither pitcher with a walk in this ball game. But what Smoltz has had is a lot of deep counts. He's had a lot of three and two counts, especially the first couple of innings of the game. John Smoltz has 189 wins. And remember, he spent three and a half years working out of the bullpen. There's no telling how many wins he would have now if not for that. And when he became a closer, he became a brilliant closer. He surely did. I was of the camp that when he, they decided to, when they decided to bring him back into the starting rotation, that he might hurt his arm. And Boy, he sure did. Look, just a, just a wonderful career. He said all along that he wanted to start. And Loduca lines one down the line, chased by Diaz. Loduca takes the turn and holds on. A leadoff single for Paul Loduca. Fourth time in six innings, the Mets have had a leadoff hit against Smoltz. And Delgado will come to bat with a man on. As Delgado comes to bat, let's check in with Chris Cotter. 
Well, Gary, I heard you earlier in the broadcast uh, mention Carlos Delgado picking up the Mets award for the uh, Roberto Clemente Player of the Year. And every Major League Ball Club has one. And at the end of the year, actually during the World Series, one will be named for the entire uh, Major League Baseball. Now, no Puerto Rican-born player has ever won the Roberto Clemente Award, which I thought was interesting. It would be fantastic and fitting if Carlos were to win it this year. After all, he changed his number to number 21 to honor Roberto Clemente. All the great things Carlos does, not only extra bases where he has personally donated over half a million dollars himself to the foundation, but also he awards two four-year scholarships every year, brings a slew of uh, great students from Puerto Rico, 35 this year, up to the Big Apple to uh, enjoy some Mets games and to look at the schools up here. So he's all about education and does a tremendous amount of work in the community. He has always been a great citizen. That is the one thing, you know, with the salaries the players make today, they can be so much more charitable. And it's the one thing that I wish I could have, you know, we, we made good money, but we didn't make this kind of money. Right. Where there was so much excess. There's so many things I could have, causes I could have donated a lot more of my money to. Uh, but these guys are terrific down there. And the Mets, of course, encourage that, the organization from their, from their team, team, from their players. And, the Mets are very involved in the community, community and are very charitable. And what you love about the Mets players and their charities, and, and it, maybe it just appears this way, but it seems as though they're not just involved with their dollars, they're involved with their time yes. and their, their care. Smoltz blow on the fastball by Delgado. He's been having a little bit of trouble lately. And there's David Wright now who's donated what that new, what, 1.5 million of his, neck, of his new contract towards Met Charities. And Delgado hits it to deep right field. Frank Kerr looking up at the wall, and it's out of here! Carlos Delgado with a two-run homer, his 36th of the year. That'll get him to 100 runs batted in, and it'll get the Mets a 3-1 to lead against Smoltz here in the sixth. There's charity, and then there's contributions. And it means we have a winner in the Mets home run inning presented by Amtrak Asella Express. One grand prize winner will win a trip anywhere in the Northeast with Amtrak Asella Express to enter or see if you're a contestant. And if you were today, congratulations. Visit SNY.TV slash Amtrak today. Well, here it is. One of the few mistakes by... Smoltz today, fastball up, and you saw Smoltz's reaction. Carlos stays very level on that high fastball. Now, the, the previous pitch, Smoltz made Delgado look bad with a fastball. But they were down and away. That was up and over the outer half. It was a mistake, big time mistake. And you saw Smoltz almost do a backward flip there. He knew he made a big mistake. It's a darn white. I couldn't he pop it up. So the Mets get a lead for Dave Williams. Carlos Delgado becomes the third Met to reach 100 runs batted in this season. First time since 1999 that the Mets have had three players with 100 or more RBIs. Toward the hole, cut off nicely by Ibar, and he throws out right one away. Well, the eighth home run for Delgado, 21 RBI in the last 13 games. There was a point here where they were, everybody thought he wouldn't get 100 RBI. But he has been red hot since he broke out of that slump. He's hitting over 400 in his last 18 contests, hitting 16 of those. He has just really broke out in a big way like all good hitters do. It's the eighth year in which Delgado has had 100 or more RBIs. And Sean Green, he fouls one off. He would have had nine straight years except two years ago with Toronto. He only played 128 games because of injuries, and he drove in 99. Oh. So he just missed having nine straight years of 100 RBIs. But 800 RBI seasons, that's pretty good. Green takes inside one and one. Last year with Florida, Delgado drove in 115. He has driven in as many as 145. He did that in 2003. Well, 
We're talking about that great run he's had RBI wise now to get over the 100 RBI mark. You were talking earlier about, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, go ahead. It's just that he's got 26 RBIs now in his last 17 contests. You were talking earlier about Ryan Howard and how he's made an impression on you as far as the MVP race. Yes. Howard's I, got 134 already. Um, his numbers now. As Green drives it to deep right field, Frank Kerr is back, and it's off the wall. Green trying for second. Frank Kerr's got a great arm, but he's safe at second base. Sean Green almost had his first home run as a Met, but he settles for a one-out double. Well, it's right there, down in the outer half, and that's Green's happy area, and hits it off the wall. And right now, you see Green hustling for two. Smoltz is getting hurt away. We talked earlier how uh, Roger McDowell has been trying to get the entire Bra Brave staff to throw more inside. Now the lefties have hurt Smoltz at times this year, and they're going to walk Valentine and pitch to Tucker instead to set up the double play. But lefties are hitting 272 against Smoltz this year. It's a little higher than we're used to seeing. This is the first walk of the game issued by Smoltz. We're talking about Ryan Howard, the 134 RBIs. He's on a pace for what, 155, something like that. Well. If he continues to have the September that he's having thus far in this last week of August, he keeps putting up the he's going to hit 60 home runs. He has a great chance for that, too. Those are hard numbers to not overlook. Now, I think it's even more critical that his Philly team wins the wild card. It would really help him. But 86, Mike did, and Mike Schmidt win the uh, MVP in 86. Yes, he did. And a team that was 20 something games out of first place. It happens. Andre Dawson and A Rod both won it. MVPs for last place teams. Here's Tucker, 0 for 2. And he swings at the fastball, nothing and one. Tyler Yates, the former Met, getting ready in the Atlanta bullpen. Tucker waving at the splitter and it's 0 and 2. I'm trying to think. As you look at the last pitch to Tucker. Splitter. Let's try to think about 150 RBIs and how rare that is as Feliciano gets ready in the bullpen. I mean, we had such inflated numbers for a few years there. You know, Sosa had 160. In 01, we can throw out those years. Yeah, I'm thinking about National League. You know, other than Colorado, and other than, you know, the years in which we think numbers were instated, inflated by steroids. 150 RBI is a very tough number to reach. And it's two and two to Tucker. I mean, well, Gal Colorado had 150 in Colorado one year. So you got to factor in the light air. It's almost an RBI a game, obviously. It's not an easy thing to do. I mean, if you ignore just the last 10 years in Colorado, as Tucker rips one foul, you got to go back in the National League to 1962 when Tommy Davis drove in 153 Tommy. for the Dodgers. MVP year that year, wasn't it? No, it was not an MVP year for him. That was the year the Giants won. Yeah. Did he win the MVP? I know Maury, Maury Wills won the MVP that year. Yes. For the uh, well, that's when he stole 100 bases. Yeah, 104. 100 plus, right? 104. Yeah, I'd, but 100 again, 150 RBIs. It's not easy. Ryan Howard may do it in his second year. Tucker pulls one over the bag. Nice play by LaRoche. It's a foul ball. First base umpire Mike Estabrook, a vacation replacement, making the call. Oh, well, nice play by LaRoche here. Ball's foul, but that was a double. Came up to a bad hop. Nice reaction on that backhand. Here's Estabrook. They bring an extra umpire in for double headers so that the guys who work the plate in each game don't have to work for the other game. So Jim Reynolds, who's going to work the plate in the second game, gets this game off. Ted Barrett, who's got the plate in this game, will get the second game off. 
Two and two to Tucker with two on. Smoltz about to throw his 110th pitch. Mets have taken a 3 1 lead here in the sixth on Delgado's two run homer. Fouls another one off. Well, no day off out in new ballpark land. I cannot wait when we come back next year in April to see the progression of the park. Up to and come by during the winter. I will not be here in the winter. Sorry about <laughs> that. I can wait till April 1st. Maybe we can take a little time lapse photography for you. Send me an email. Let you see what it looks like each day. Send me an attachment. I'll do that. You have my email address. I do. Pipes and bricks and earth movers, backhoes, but no groundbreaking yet, they tell us. Breaking ball bounced. Fair. And LaRoche will settle for the out at first as the runners move up two away. So runners in scoring position for Chavez. We'll see if they walk him intentionally. Half-lack trivia question. Well, you know, Keith, you have really struggled with these questions all year. We're hoping that you know the answer to this one. Who I, led the National you, League in walks in 1986? You asked me that question, and uh, I was, I did not know this. Well, we'll see. Roger McDowell out to the mound. A little gamesmanship going on here because Andy Chavez has come to the plate. It's second and third and two out. And Ricky Lede has come out on deck. Now, you would figure Dave Williams is not exiting this game. Williams has thrown 72 pitches in six innings, and he's pitched a great game. But Willie Randolph at least wants Bobby Cox to consider that he might pinch hit, and so Lede is out on deck. I think he will to try to break this ball game open. See Williams sitting down. So, the Braves do not have a left-hander up. Only Tyler Yates. We showed you that earlier. So they pitch to Chavez, and it's 1-0. Oh. They're going to pitch very carefully. There's Tyler. They only, have, they only have one lefty in that bullpen, McKay McBride, and he's pitched five times in the last four days. And it's Feliciano. Braves had two doubleheaders over the weekend in Philly and another one today. Two and 2-0 oh to Chavez. So Smoltz trying to get Andy to chase. So you th so you think if they walk Chavez that that Willie's going to bat for Williams. Yes. You think that's not a decoy. Yeah. See how low the hands are on the catcher here. You got to be careful. Not, that's OK there. You got a lot of catchers to get their stein sign stolen. There's a strike by a first base or third base coach. If their fingers are their hands are too low mm -hmm. to the closer to the ground as you can see through his legs is from the third base side. You can pick out the fingers, and I had a lot of times signs were stolen in that way. So catchers have to really keep their hands, make sure they keep their hands up. Good pitch. Great pitch on the inside corner, two and two. It's it happened a lot early in my career. That's a, just a fine inside corner fastball right there. So Smoltz trying to work himself out of further trouble. He's already given up the two-run homer to Delgado to give the Mets the lead. Now two in scoring position with two out. Oh, nice play. Bounces one to Chavez, three and two as McCann stopped it. McCann has shown some really fine skills back there. He's had to block several balls today. Yeah. That's a runner on third base. That's big right there. Well, Smoltz has had a very hard working day. Day, uh, Chavez will make him work a little bit more. And that's an up and in fastball. And like I've always said, you've got to pitch Indy in, predominantly in. We've seen so many times this year him, Indy uh, getting base hits to left field goes so well the opposite field. 
Hits the ball where it's pitched. Congratulations to Carlos Delgado. 100 RBIs on the season. Again. 3-2 to Chavez. Ball four. Bases are loaded. Let's see what Willie does. He will send up Lede to pinch hit. So that's all for Dave Williams, who now has himself a lead after six terrific innings. Well, he certainly pitched another good ball game, and this is the right move right here. Base hit kind of breaks the ball game open. Take a chance. And with the strength of that bullpen out there. Now let me play devil's advocate. You've got a double header today. Your starting pitcher is throwing 72 pitches. And you've already got the lead. I don't think the bullpen's been taxed out there. I think he'll just go one inning each with each reliever. That's not taxing their arms. Oh, nice breaking ball. Well, Ricky Lede just recalled yesterday. Remember he spent some time with the Mets after being acquired in a trade with the Dodgers and really struggled as a pinch hitter and he bats here with the bases loaded and two down and don't forget too, we had the off day yesterday one and one to the day not the off day the rain out so no one pitched yesterday and the only guy the last two games that's pitched back to back has been Roberto Hernandez and inning a an inning and appearance Royce ring through two the opening of the series. One and one to the day. Gets ahead of him with a slider. Well 0 for 9 with 5 K Smolt has given the day trouble in his career but nothing to be ashamed of he's given a lot of guys trouble in his wonderful career. Smoltz has thrown over 40 pitches in this inning. Look at his <laughs> He's ready for a foul ball at the slightest occurrence. One hopper to second, and Prado throws him out, and so Smoltz able to avoid further trouble. 123 pitches for Smoltz. He's done. So is Dave Williams. And now it goes to the bullpens after Carlos Delgado gave the Mets the lead with his 36th home run of the year. 100 RBIs for Delgado, and the Mets up. Matt Yaloff here with a Chevrolet Baseball Day in New York update. Cardinals still trying to lock up the Central Division, getting some help from Scott Spezio, the three-run home run. It's 3-2 Cardinals over the Nationals in the sixth. Chris Carpenter, a Cy Young hopeful, going for St. Louis. Gary? Pedro Feliciano takes over the pitching for the Mets as we go to the seventh. And you can see Pedro <clears throat> has had a fine year out of the bullpen, 57th appearance. He's been the specialist against brings in bring Willie brings in to get the left handed out. Now to get your Sportsnet New York on the web make your homepage SNY.TV the online home of all things New York sports and while you're there submit your questions to Dodges ask the booth Jason from Long Island wants to know <laughs> apropos last night what do announcers do during a rain delay. That's easy. Well Jason it varies. <laughs> yeah from what to what. Well if you're tired you can take a nap. <laughs> You can go into the eats room. There's popcorn, ice cream. Matt Diaz takes a strike. That's about that's my repertoire. You got the ice cream, you got the peanuts, you got the popcorn. The longer the rain delay, the more pounds. In the in the press room that there, or you can do that like me. Must have been a long night. There's a big press room up here uh, behind the the press box where we call the game from and it's where all the writers go it's a large room there's around four or five TVs in there they're on various games that are play, being played around the league and there's lots of ways to fill the time but it basically it's boring it's a lot of eating and waiting around Shirley Temple's in the ballpark on the good ship lollipop Sweet trip. One and two to Diaz, and he lines one to left center for a base hit. So the Braves will get the tying run to the plate here in the seventh inning with Brian McCann coming up. The catcher, Brian McCann. Let me check out the Toyota National League scoreboard. Yeah, somebody other than Albert Pujols gets some offense for St. Louis. Scott Spezio. A three run homer to put the Cardinals in front. 
Cardinals with a six game lead in the Central. The Giants and Reds both three and a half out of the wild card. Ray Durham a couple of home runs for the Giants today. And that's Chris Carpenter going for his 14th win. And he's really stepped it up. His had a little dry spell there in August. Well, but he's picked up and pitching great baseball for the Cardinals down the stretch who've opened up a six game lead in that Central. And Carpenter leads the National League and earned run average as well. So you have to figure he's the favorite to win that Cy Young again. Here's Guillermo Moda up in the Mets bullpen. I kind of leaning towards Penny myself right now. 2 and 0 to McCann. Other games later on the Dodgers trying to snap a three game losing streak before they come to Shea. Don't think that's Derek Logo in tonight. I thought he's pitching against the Mets tomorrow. Let me see. I think it's Penny tonight, isn't it? No, they got Derek Lowe on here. Really? Yeah. On our notes, we have Derek Lowe pitching tomorrow night against Tom Clavin. And then tomorrow's <laughs> schedule it had, has Derek Lowe. So there you Something, go. Someone messed up. Somebody messed up. <laughs> yeah, the Dodgers had to scratch their young lefty Chad Billingsley from Friday night's start here at Shea. He has an oblique strain, so that's messed up their rotation a little bit. Down to first, Delgado's got it. To second, Reyes has to reach back to Delgado, 3-6-3. Three, three. Two out and nobody on. Well, nice play by Delgado here, and nice play by Reyes. It throws a little offline. You're that close to the bag, it's easy for a first baseman to get back to the bag. A little off, nice recovery by Reyes, and easy for Delgado. He's right close to the bag. See, right there. Now get rid of the ball and get back to the bag. Now how can a right hand thrower avoid throwing it that wide. Well the runners that, that is why it's a better to have a first baseman a left handed first baseman because the throw your arm is inside the line. The right hander you have to throw more maybe more sidearm to get more of a sinking action. Would you want him to move further in. Not really because you more you're in you're going to lose ground. You always want to come in and maybe try to catch the ball in one hop. But that ball's hit pretty hard. LaRoche lifts it to left center and Tucker's right there. And Pedro Feliciano puts up a zero in the top of the seventh. Stretch time in game one of the doubleheader. And it's the Mets in front of the Braves three to one. Weekday afternoon baseball in New York. Doubleheader at Shea. Smoltz and Williams, the starters. Lots of early work for Michael Tucker. Jose Reyes gets some coaching. Brian McCann hits a home run. Reyes learns from the coaching, and Delgado hits a home run to put the Mets in front. That's what's transpired so far. It's still plenty of baseball to be played. Hey, if you're in the neighborhood, we got lots of good seats. Why don't you come and stop by? Are you doing both games today? I'll be here. How about you? Ronnie's not doing a second game. Ronnie's in the studio. What's he doing there? Is he, has he got pulled back there or what? <laughs> I don't know. Tyler Yates will take over the pitching for the Braves, taking over for John Smoltz. The former Met pitches to Jose Reyes, who takes ball one. I figured double header, we'd have the two of you, the, the two headed analyst monster. It makes too much sense. Reyes lifts one to left, hit well, but Diaz has room. One away. Now that might be a home run in Philadelphia. And Houston. Houston folks. for sure. Houston, that ball's 10 rows back. Houston, that is a home run. Well, Reyes loves to hit Philadelphia. Heck half his home runs this year against the Phillies. Here's Loduca, one for three. And that's another thing too. Jose Reyes with 16 home runs. I would never have thought that he would ever have been close to being a 20 home run guy. And he's going to hit 20 home runs when his before his career is over, without even trying. Do you think as he gets older and fills out more, he might be more than that? Um, you would want him to stay in the leadoff spot, hitting line drives. And just doing it naturally without trying. He's got 16 home runs without, he's not trying to hit home runs. You hope not. No, he's not. But you don't want him to go, you know, I've always said home runs are so seductive, you get in bad habits. And I think we saw that some last year when he hit a home run, all of a sudden he'd start thinking home run a little bit. Delgado, who's the difference in this game, waiting on deck. Hit hard, but Prado's got it on one hop. Two out. 
So two out and nobody on, and here's Carlos Delgado, who provided our Coors Light cold blast his last time up. Well, one of the few mistakes from Smoltz today, a fastball up and out over the plate, and you'll get Smoltz's reaction. It was Carlos' 36th home run, his 100th RBI, and he's done it again. Congratulations to Carlos. Eighth time in his career he's reached 100 RBIs. 36 home runs now for Delgado. Three behind Beltron for the club lead. Beltron better get back in the lineup. Carlos hoping to play the second game today. We'll see how he's feeling. 2-0 to Delgado. More blue cotton candy. Let's see. Turn your face, slugger. Oh, my goodness. Lovely. Those blue smiles. It's like a Bobby Vinton song. <laughs> yes. Blue on blue. Blue, blue velvet. velvet. <laughs> Call me Mr. Blue. Just like the movie Blue Velvet just kind of ruined that song, didn't it? Yeah, it was a little different. <laughs> Slightly. Out of the way. Lights are on here at Shea. We don't have any threat of rain, but clouds have overtaken the sun, so they've put the lights on just to even things up a little bit. David Wright hoping for a turn on deck. What is that? I don't know. I was trying to figure out the same thing. Headlights? Can we pull back on that shot? Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> it's oh. the Lincoln Zephyr. We're not with it today. <laughs> and Delgado taps one up the line. Easy play for LaRoche. That retires the side. So the former Met Tyler Yates comes on and throws a 1 2 3 He's inning. On to the eighth in game one. one Mets by a deuce. Be sure to be at Shea tomorrow night at 7.10 p.m. for the start of a four-game series with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Take the train or water taxi to the game. Visit Mets.com for information on mass transit service to Shea. Well, normally, it's Aaron Heilman in the eighth inning in a tight game. Today, it's Guillermo Moda. Well, Moda certainly pitched well enough for this to be given this spot. The doubleheader, I'm sure, if the situation arises, in the second game, it'll be Heilman. Oda has been marvelous since joining the Mets. And, you know, when we, we talked to Omar about possibilities in terms of the postseason pitching staff, that makes it more difficult to make the decision. The fact that guys like Moda and Hernandez and Oliver have pitched so well. And Maine. Right. I mean, in terms of finding a spot for Maine, there's not an obvious guy to pop right. out of that bullpen. In 2006, Hyundai, the Mets, and Sportsnet New York are teaming up to strike out cancer for every K of the Mets pitching staff registers. Hyundai, the Mets, and Sportsnet New York will donate $25 to the Hope and Heroes Children's Cancer Fund. If you'd like to help, go to www.hopeandheroes.org. There's John. Boy, he's had a, he's pitched tremendously. Very soft-spoken young man, isn't he? He'll be back on the mound Friday night. And Tom. Lavin will pitch tomorrow night, getting an extra day. Today would have been his day, but the Mets chose to give him an extra day after his Friday start in Houston. He didn't want that extra day, did he? No, he didn't. But it was foisted upon him. Pete Orr will bat for Martin Prado, leading off in the eighth inning. Give him a left-hand batter against Moda. Orr started the opening game of the series Monday night and went two for four. Guillermo Moda pitched most of this year with Cleveland and did not have a good year. And the changeup fouled at the plate, but he has been the old Guillermo Moda since joining the Mets. I was talking with Guy Conti on the the bullpen coach on the long flight home from Houston, three hours and 15 minutes. My most hated flight whenever I play with the Mets. There's Guy. 
And they moved Moda over on the first base side of the rubber. When he came over, he was on the third base side. And they said it's made all the difference in his changeup. Shallow left. Reyes gets out there. One away. His changeup, his control. And, you know, he's been something as simple as that. Isn't it funny to just as uh, <laughs> intricate as this game is 12. and detailed? Ward. Sometimes it's just the simplest things that can make a difference. Well, what I wonder is why would a right hand pitcher be on the third base side of the rubber in the first place? That's a very good point. The idea is that now he's throwing a little more actually he's throwing that sinking changeup that sinks towards the outside corner on a left hand hitter. He's way over. Here's the other end of the mound right now. He's way over on the other side. So it gives him more of an avenue to throw that sinker down. Darrell Ward pinch hitting and the change up swung and missed. And there's that sinker on the outside corner. So he's pitched wonderfully. But just, a, just the simplest of, of uh, adjustments. I mean, Bona was a dominant setup man for several years in Montreal and then in Los Angeles. Been a tough couple of years for him, but he looks like the old Moda again. And he loves he. There's McKay McBride, the only left-hander, and there's Bobby Dews, the bullpen coach right there. He was around in the Cardinal chain as a minor league coach. He coached my brother back in 1973 in A-ball. Old Bobby. I got to hang around Bobby about 20 years ago when I was doing games in Durham in the Braves organization, and he was the assistant minor league director and he would come around and tell old stories. Terrific guy. He's one of those guys that are going to are going to bury him with a uniform on. Going to die a baseball player. He's been around a long time in the game. Great years of service. Giving back to the game as they used to say. One and two to Ward. Just missed. Mm. Two and two. Let's see if it's a strike. It's a great angle. Oh, baby. Looked like Ward got a call there. Grab some pine. Willie Ibar on deck. Struck him out with a changeup. Well, I'll tell you what, Moda has just been fabulous. Two out. Well, there it is. Watch the sinking action. Look at the sink. Running away from the hitter. And off speed. That's a beautiful, beautiful pitch for him. Doesn't give it away in his motion. Well, the Mets appear to have really found something with Guillermo Moda. A guy who can be a dominant late inning pitcher and certainly has shown every sign of being able to be that again in his brief tenure as a Met. Here's Willie Ibar with two out. And he hits one well to right center field chasing back his green near the wall and it's off the base of the fence. Ibar into second base with a two out double. And so the Braves will get the tying run to the plate against Moda here in the eighth. Thirteenth double of the season for Ibar. He's three for four today. Let's see what he hits. Fastball up and out over the middle. Wanted to get it in. You see Laduca set up inside. It came back out over the plate. And up. Well, Ibar in his first game as a Brave had four hits against the Mets in Atlanta, but he also hurt his finger in that game and then played for a couple of weeks with the injury while Chipper Jones was out. Then they finally put him on the disabled list, and Ibar just recently back. Here's Renteria who's 0 for 3. Tying run at the plate. There's a strike one and one. Oh, good strike too. One and a good one and 0 pitch. And Renteria wisely takes it. Change up came over the middle a little bit. There you go. Up Guys, to date. He's into it. Hopped a foul. Oh. 
Cardinals gave up that lead. Now it's five to four in the top of the seventh. Speaking of standings, Detroit's lead shrinking by the day. It's down to four games now, and they're trailing today. And they are a young team with young pitching. And first time in the heat of battle. Lots of lessons learned for that Detroit club. I'd love to see them hang on and win that division. And they start a series in Minnesota tomorrow. Two and two. That's going to be a huge series because the Twins have made up ground little by little after a horrible start. And there they are just four games out. How about the Twins? Ron Gardenhire has done an amazing job year after year with that team. Amazing. They've had such great stability in Minnesota. Tom Kelly, Ron Gardenhire, just two managers of what, the last 20 years? Tapper to short. Reyes with the big hop. Side retire. Another strong inning for Guillermo Moda. This time he does it in the eighth inning to keep the Mets up three to one, and McKay McBride every day will come on for Atlanta. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Sterling Mets and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Sterling Mets. Well, it's about time we got to the answer to our AFLAC trivia Aflac. question. We're going to see if Keith knows this one. Well, you told me and I was shocked. But who led the National League in walks in 1986? You <laughs> did. <coughs> and you didn't even know. Did you? Much feared. How many times did you lead the league in walks? I led it in 79. I, no, I didn't. I think I led it, I know more than once. David Wright takes ball one. Well, for a guy who wasn't a home run hitter, you drew an inordinate number of intentional walks one year. Uh, well, a lot of, yes, I did. And that was when Darrell was young hitting behind me. I think it was 84 when before we had Gary Carter when he gave me the protection and they were going to pick their poison right pops it up to shallow center and Andrew Jones is there the, the thinking out. thinking behind that was and when I was young in my career I had Ted Simmons hitting behind me the 300 hitting switch hitter and there's LaGuardia the right, right there very Sean quiet Green. Like at this ballpark it's amazing how no planes fly over this time oh, of year oh it was a, a <laughs> godsend no they're, they're landing over center field folks it's so peaceful that's why Gary and I have a very laid back broadcast this, this first game. There he comes. We're very laid back. Flying around the stadium. That's very unusual for you and me. You and me laid back? Yes. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think you'd look in the Funkin' Wagnall and see laid back and see our two pitchers on there. I'm just hungry, personally. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, would, somebody would set up a pizza or some sushi. I'd be very happy right about now. <laughs> Oh, and two to Green, who's two for three on the day. And he takes ball one. Oh, sweet. Can't even hear it, see? So sweet. That's a great shot. Nice landing, very smooth. Two and two to Green. Did we get an answer to that poll yet? Or is that for the second game? I think we're still waiting on the answers. Oh, look, McKay McBride is pitching. Oh. Sorry, we're going to reveal that uh, the poll at the, in the second game I just heard from the Bat Cave and from great <laughs> our producer and director. <laughs> I think laid backs going out the window now. <laughs> Three and two to Green. McKay McBride, by the way, there's Pete Orr who stayed in the game at second base. McBride pitched Saturday. He pitched in two games on Sunday. He pitched on Monday in this series, and now he's right back out there today, and he'll probably pitch in the second game as well. He's their only lefty. Green goes the other way, hit well. Diaz back near the wall, and it's out of here! Sean Green with his first home run as a New York Met. His 12th home run of the year, a big day for Green. Single, double home run, and it's 4-1 to one New York. Uh, Green had really been slumping, but he's broken out big today. His seventh. Oh, excuse me. That's. I'm out to lunch right now. Bear with me. That's his 12th home run of the season. 
Valentine chops one big hop for Orr, and he makes the play two out and you're right Sean Green has been struggling as a Met he came into this game hitting 179 goes right with a belt high fastball the other way and that's a long poke right there that's 358 right there. And let's see. Always giving someone a bet. Why would you do that? It's got a home run in it. Are you nuts? <laughs> now he used it. He used the home run. He always does that? Well, the, the home run's out of those gloves. He doesn't need them anymore. A strike to Tucker. Boy, I wouldn't give up a home run, not glove, not, not, nothing I was wearing would go anywhere but stay with me. Things have changed. <laughs> Tucker waves at the breaking ball 0 and 2. Well significant is it that Sean has two of his three hits to left field today. Including the sure. Run? Yes he's been pulling a little bit of late and uh, particularly off the left hander. So that's a very promising sign. Uh, particularly against McBride the hard throwing left hander to go with that take that pitch go with it. We well, had barely missed a home run his previous at bat hitting one off the wall and right as Billy Wagner gets ready to try and save this game. And then Green gets his first home run as a Met going the other way. And Tucker drives one deep toward the right field corner. And that hops over the wall for a ground rule double. So a couple of extra base hits off McKay McBride. And you really have to wonder, he got one lefty in the bullpen and they're using him every day. This kid's wearing out. That's a hanging slider right there. And I think it's safe to say, safe to say he won't be used. And look at the Mets, they're into it. So a double for Tucker, his first hit of the day. You know, the lefties off McBride this year hitting a mere 171. Well, he's given up a couple of extra base hits to lefties in this inning. He'll face another one now in Chavez. And he has a double. He's also drawn a walk, one for two. Big cut. That was Andy's home run cut. Oh, looking for something in, wasn't he? That was his World Baseball Classic swing. Hit two home runs for Venezuela back in March. And he has three during the regular season. Well, That's a great shot from the top of the stadium. Well, it's such a beautiful day. Take your life in your hands bringing a camera up there, don't you? That is just gorgeous. Another high strike, one and two. They're chanting Cha Cha Chavez. And there's the top of the other stadium. I like that better than Jose, 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 Jose. Chavez goes oh, down God. to end the inning. Can that, would you? Well, Sean Green can that one into the left field bullpen his first home run as a Met and the batting gloves go to a fan with this Chevrolet baseball day in New York update on Matt Yaloff last night Johan Santana the twins mowed down the Devil Rays reaching 17 wins on the season he's the first to do that the twins making a run at the central Gary back to you meanwhile this afternoon in Detroit the Tigers have tied up the Mariners in the eighth inning. Four to four as the Twins chase the Tigers. Billy Wagner on to try and close it for New York here in game one. Johan Santana got off to that horrible start for the Twins this year. Now 17 and 5, 38 and 3 after the All Star break over the last four years. Well, you always want to have a better second half than a first. Jeff Frank Kerr takes ball one Frank Kerr 0 for three and he struck out twice. Wagner bidding for his 35th save this afternoon. Second behind Trevor Hoffman in the National League Hoffman has 37. Terrific pitching for the Mets today six innings out of Dave Williams. He allowed just a run on five hits Pedro Feliciano and Guillermo Moda each with a scoreless inning and now Wagner trying to finish it up. Mets trying to snap this two game losing streak. And get their 85th win of the year. Oh, 
two and one to Frank Kerr. Well, they're still not ma mathematically eliminated, the Mets, on getting that 108 wins, you know. 108? That's tough. Oh. I mean, they only have they 20, can, 25 they can only have, games. They, got, they can only afford to lose two more. I don't think that's going to happen. Two and two to Frank Kerr. They'll be happy with 100 wins, I think. I think that's something they're very much striving for. High fastball. You, you go up the ladder. The right center, and Chavez cuts over. Got it. One out. Well, you've heard us explain that this September the WB11 is changing into the new CW11, but here's something you might not know. Starting September 18th, Jim Belushi is bringing his Laugh Out Loud family comedy, According to Jim, to the new CW11. So look for According to Jim weekdays this fall on the CW11. Andrew Jones with one out and nobody on. Andrew's 0 for 2 in this game. And he takes ball one. Can I ask you a question? Ask me anything. What did Andy do to end the inning, last inning? He uh, struck out. Oh, okay. Swingy. How did I miss that? Hey, you were eating peanuts. <laughs> There's a strike one and one. Somebody brought a pizza to the booth, by the way. Did you know that? You're, I'm starving. There's a pizza sitting right over to our left. I am. I you know what? I normally don't eat those kind of foods, but I will woof a, a slice. Two and one. <laughs> Those high fat content foods. Now but you're going to get the pizza manufacturers. Oh, all but over I love you. pizza. <laughs> and Andrew lifts one to right center. Chavez is there. And there are two away. So Wagner's retired the first two on fly balls to center, and now he's one out away. Billy hasn't worked since Saturday night when uh, Carlos Beltran saved his bacon. With that great catch off Lance Berkman, making like Spider Man into the left field fence in the left center field fence in Houston. Here's Matt Diaz with two out. Diaz two for three on the day, and he takes a strike. On the ground, base hit. No foul ball. Ooh, boy, did that look like a fair ball from here. But the third base umpire, Tim Welke, right there, called it foul. Let's see. Let's see again. Close. Wow. Diaz was running it out. David Wright sacrificing a little skin on his arm to make that dive. Braves down to their final strike. In there for a call strike three and the ball game is over. Billy Wagner with his 35th save capping off a very well pitched game for the Mets as they win their 85th of the year. Sean Green with a breakout day with three hits including his first Mets home run. Carlos Delgado getting to 100 runs batted in with his 36th home run. And the Mets reduced their magic number to 10 for clinching the National League East with a 4 to 1 win. Well, a good sign here for Sean Green to break out today in this first one. So the Mets take the opener of the doubleheader to even up the series with the Braves. The pizza is on tap between games. Keith's eating already. Here at Shea, the Mets take game one from the Braves as we check out our AOL game summary. Carlos Delgado gave them the lead in the sixth with his 36th home run as he got to 100 RBIs. Brian McCann had a solo shot for the only Atlanta run, and Sean Green, three hits, including his first home run as a Met. As the Mets win their 85th of the year, powered by the big first baseman. John Smoltz crushed 36 home runs for Delgado. And the Mets win it 4-1 to one with another one to play today. And we'll come back to Shea in just a moment. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes can save you 15% on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. 
My Jeep, the all-new seven-passenger Jeep Commander. It's your world. Take command. And by the New York State Smokers Quit Line, call 1-866-NY-QUITS for free help and advice. Start your free, smoke-free life today. Mets beat the Braves in the opener at the doubleheader 4-1 to one to reduce their magic number to 10 for clinching the National League East. John Smoltz against Dave Williams on a beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Mets play defense early. Brian McCann got the Braves an early run, but the Mets tied it. And then Carlos Delgado with a two-run homer to put the Mets in front. Sean Green added a home run as well. And the Mets win it by the score of 4-1. to one. We'll be back here to Shea Stadium. First pitch for the second game right around 4-10. After this commercial, we'll go to Matt Yaloff and Ron Darling in our Sportsnet New York studios. Keith and I will be back with you in just a few minutes. Get after that pizza. <laughs> Well, this is Nissan Post Game Live. Ron Darling, Matt Yaloff here in the SNY studios in Midtown Manhattan. In the next half hour or so, we'll recap game number one of this doubleheader at Shea as the Mets reduce their magic number to 10. Nice game for Dave Williams, but Sean Green really makes his mark, breaks out of a slump in a big way. Yeah, Sean Green won for his last 20 coming into the game, wanted to do something, of course, and getting off to a great start in the first game of the doubleheader. Three for four, just missed hitting two home runs out. His double hit the wall in right field, so a nice show of power for Sean Green. All right, and uh, Mets certainly happy about that, that the offense on a whole green, Delgado, they got things going. The pitching was there. They beat the Braves in game one. If you missed anything, here it is. Highlights. Game one of this doubleheader got underway just after one o'clock today. The rain yesterday, beautiful today. There's the Manhattan skyline, the one and only Jose Reyes on base with Paul Aduca up, and he chops it back to John Smoltz, but Reyes does not advance. Here's a replay. Should he move on there, Ronnie? Well, he should move on, but he kind of, kind of got shielded by Smoltz. Wasn't able to move along on that ground from Laduca. Second Brian inning, McCann first pitch of the inning. Brian McCann, the great young catcher for the Braves. He hits his 17th home run of the year. That's off of Dave Williams, so the Braves are up one zip. Bottom second, here's Sean Green. Came in in that one for 20 slump going the other way. Well, two of his hits, including his home run, were the other way. Good sign of hitting by Sean Green. There's Jose Valentin. This against Smoltz with a, a double. and it's like, a, it's like hitting the green and on a golf course. The ball is just dying out there. I guess it's soft after all the rain. But that drives Green in, and we're all tied up at 1-1. Ron, now let's go back to Monday's game. This is David Wright, the only hit for the Mets in this game. Matt Diaz off the wall. Makes a perfect throw to second and gets David Wright trying to stretch a single into a double. Today, Ronnie, you take it. It's Andy Chavez. Well, Andy Chavez has been doing this all year long. His ability to go the other way. This one, like you said, kind of stops in that wet outfield. Diaz with a nice throw, but Andy Chavez, of course, runs a little better than David Wright. Yeah, just a tad. Sixth inning now, and my goodness, that one is up and out. And I mean up in the zone, and Delgado turns on it, Ron, and puts it way out. Well, congratulations, Delgado. 100 RBIs. Unbelievable. Three guys on the Mets with 100 RBIs. The first time they've had that since 1999. This is Sean Green's first home run as a New York Met. The Mets have themselves a 4-1 to one lead. And enter Billy Wagner. Here he is. Save number 35. And he was under control today. That fastball away to Matt Diaz. Just too much for Diaz to even get a bat off his shoulder. So Wagner is looking very good. The starting pitching is good. The pen has been great again. The magic number, as we mentioned, down to 10. It can be 9 in about 3 hours. It can be 8 in about 6 hours. So clearly it's just a formality here until the Mets wrap up the Eastern Division. Well, it's a big game today. Playing uh, John Schmoltz, whenever you're playing in the first game of doubleheader, you want to take that game. Schmoltz had good stuff today, and the Mets really battled him, and he made one mistake really to Carlos Delgado, and he paid for it. And if there's anything that's impressive about the Mets right now, we know the lead is big, is that they're playing solid baseball. They come out in this game after the rainout last night. It's crisp, fundamental baseball, even with this lead. Well, you wouldn't expect anything less from Willie Randolph coached a team. That's how Willie played. Uh, very professional, always uh, nose to the grindstone. This team is doing it too. But they're also, if you watch the bench today a little bit, they're having fun with it also. Why not? Have a little <laughs> fun with a lead like that. Still ahead on Nissan Post Game Live, Ron and I continue to break down game one of this doubleheader. We'll have some highlights from Major League Baseball games occurring outside the borough of Queens. And we'll check in with Willie Randolph, his post game comments following game one. All that and more.
on Nissan Post Game Live.